Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video with On Point Politics, your number one stop for all things polling and election analysis. And today we're going to be collabing with Gold Crown Politics, another accurate forecaster for the 2020 election to see where we stand as of right now. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, guys, Gold Crown Politics here uh, on point. Thanks for having me on. Let's get into it. All right, guys, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want more content just like this, hit the bell notification, share this on X, and comment down below to help us out with the algorithm as well. So essentially, we kind of averaged out our margins in certain swing states. We have an expanded battleground map. So yes, there is 313 toss-ups, but not all of them are technically toss-up states. We're kind of just going to have an expanded map, and we're essentially going to go from west to east. That's what we'll do in this video. And what I did is I essentially averaged out our margins for all of these states that we have projected. And we have somewhat similar margins in some of the states, by the way. But first, we're going to look at Gold Crown Politics' 2020 margin. He reweighted all of the polling averages you know, from 2020. He was able to get the popular vote even closer than mine. And he was able to get the swing states even closer to me as well, which is pretty crazy. And we look at this, and this is the map he would have gotten here. Applying the swing state polling averages, he would have been able to get them even more accurate. States without polling averages, they kind of rely on a national trend and you know guessing of the demographics. But essentially, he would have gotten a perfect map in that election. And I also have a perfect map with a similar system. Our models are similar, but still slightly different. But my model, as you can see right here, going to the swing states like, you know, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Michigan, my error in a lot of these states is only in a few directions. I actually overestimated the Democrats in all of the really close swing states, by the way. And I also got 100% accuracy in 2020 as well. And even Gallup is pretty fascinating because we can see right here that Gallup also has a metric that Currently, right now, they all favor the Republicans. Party ID slash leaning is favoring them. Economic satisfaction is low. It's actually pretty low compared to the other years. U.S. satisfaction is at an all-time low. Presidential job approval is also very low. Republicans are favored on all of the issues as well. Even the preference for government activity is 55% do less, 41% do more. And this party leaning you know, poll that Gallup does every year actually ends up being spot on. In 2008, they predicted a D plus eight electorate and Obama won the popular vote by 7.2. Here it was D plus four in 2012. Obama won the popular vote by 3.9. D plus three in 2016. Clinton won the popular vote by 2.1. And it was D plus five in the 2020 election and Biden won the popular vote by four and a half. And why don't you look at that? We have a plus three for the Republicans right now. And both of our popular vote margins essentially are within two and a half to three and a half point victories for Trump, depending on which uh, model you basically pay attention to more. And we see this literally the year where the party led on the most important issue. They were the one who ended up winning the election. The only one, the only time that this didn't actually happen was I believe it was 19, oh no, even in 1976, the Democrat was ahead on this issue and they actually still ended up winning regardless. So. Pretty fascinating stuff, guys. This has been a pretty big track record, even more accurate than Alan Lickman's, you know, even more accurate than Alan Lickman's stuff. And you can see in 2000, they didn't even do a poll on this, which was kind of strange. But we also see even Americans' opinions on which political party is able to keep the U.S. prosperous. The Republicans are now ahead. 2016, they were only ahead by a bit. Now there's a huge advantage for the Republicans. They haven't had a much of a lead as this or even as high as that since 1988, where George, you know, George H.W. Bush basically won that election by a double digit lead in the popular vote or close to it. And you can see the economic confidence hasn't been this bad since 2008 when it was minus 72 and now it's minus 28. Another bad indicator. And usually when the economy is in the bad indicator, it usually tends to have the incumbent party fall. The only time this happened was when 2012, it was negative one, but Obama kind of bucked that trend very narrowly. But you can see that this has been fairly accurate over time. And with Gold Crown's model, we're going to go ahead and let him explain the model, and then we'll kind of get into our averaged out margins. 
So here uh, you can see my national election model. I basically have uh, three different models that I average out uh, to calculate the popular vote for this election. So you can see the first one up there. That's my polling bias uh, model. I basically um, look at the fact that the polls have been very uh, skewed towards Democrats. You know, pa the past election cycle, they were overestimated by about four and a half points in my estimation nationally, which was a huge overestimation. And so if you apply that same polling bias to the current um, average, uh, which I have that average as about 1.32 points for Harris, if you apply the four and a half point Dem overestimation, I get to Trump plus uh, 3.2 uh, in the national popular vote. Um, and then you can scroll down, you can see my second model. Uh, this one here is my vote share model. It includes job approval. A job approval historically has been very accurate in terms of estimating uh, vote share for candidates. And for Harris, I actually uh, updated this. I, I used to use RCP for um, her job approval, but now I'm using 538 because they technically do have a much better sample size. And I'm also weighing it a little bit differently as well. It's not a D plus one electorate. I'm actually estimating in my personal estimation an R plus two electorate. And I'm gonna explain that uh, potentially on my channel in a later video. Um, but that margin is uh, Trump plus 2.9, as you can see there. And then in my third model, if you scroll down, my favorability model is kind of similar uh, in terms of the, uh, or similar to the job approval model, where instead I use favorability. Uh, and you can see uh, Trump is leading this model by two points. And so I basically average out all those models. And if you scroll down, you can see my official model average, which has uh, Trump at about plus 2.7 right now in terms of the national popular vote. And so, you know, both On Point Politics and myself, we have very similar margins um, in the popular vote, about, uh, you know, plus 2.5 for Trump uh, to plus three. And that lines up with Gallup. You know, as he showed earlier, they, they track, you know, party ID going back, uh, you know, multiple decades. And ever since 2008, it's been, you know, pretty much spot on in terms of tracking the popular vote. It's indicating about Trump plus three this cycle. And that's what both On Point Politics and myself do have. And so it's very encouraging uh, to see that our margins are lining up and also our state margins are lining up as well. You can see these are my state margins on the map there. Um, and we can uh, start comparing our state margins if you want to scroll down On Point if you want to. So essentially, guys, to fill out the map now, we do have estimated, you know, averaged out margins. I basically have my own margins for all of the states that are listed here. And Gold Crown has it as well. We'll kind of be filling these out. I'll go ahead and let Gold Crown do the blue states first. And then we'll go ahead and I'll also do the red states and the swing states as well. And we'll also fill out those districts really quick too. So go ahead and do the districts in the blue states. And I'll do the swing states and the red states. So for the deep blue states, uh, let's start with Minnesota. Uh, that average uh, between our two models is about 0 0.7 points for Kamala Harris. That is a tilt margin. Uh, this state, it could be uh, pretty close uh, considering the fact that the state is actually pretty elastic. It swings um, pretty violently both uh, directions um, uh, politically. We saw this in 2016 where it came pretty close. And then in 2020, it zoomed off to the left. And so I think for the state, it could very well be closer if it zooms to the right. It would have to trend right. It very well could. Uh, New Hampshire, uh, this, our model, or our, our average between our two models is 0.5 points for Kamala Harris. Uh, this state is pretty similar to Minnesota in the sense that independents are very swingy voters. Uh, you know, it's a little unpredictable uh, of a state to predict, but uh, a 0 0.5 point margin for Kamala Harris. Trump is within striking distance to win that state. Uh, Maine, we are looking at a 1.3 point margin for Kamala Harris. It's in the lean column. Uh, pretty similar to New Hampshire, you have a lot of swingy voters. The independents in Maine, they're a little unpredictable. New Mexico, we're looking at a 2.9 point margin for Kamala Harris, which is in the lean Democratic column. Uh, this state, you know, I definitely think that Trump uh, because it's a border state, immigration will play a role in terms of the state potentially trending a little bit to the right. You know, it typically uh, the trend in the state is typically neutral, uh, historically speaking, but the state uh, could definitely get closer for Trump, you know, depending on what the exact national environment that we're looking at. Um, and then we can look at Virginia. This uh, margin between our two models averages out to 2.9 points for Kamala Harris. You know, this state, um, I think it's I think it's definitely 
one where Trump can make up some ground. You know, 2020, it did zoom off to the left because it's very college educated. But I do think that Glenn Youngkin, being a, a, an exceptional governor there, he has a very high approval rating. He could be helping in, in terms of, you know, helping the state turn back to the right. You know, he also passed uh, the paper ballot initiative that could certainly help Republicans in the state. Uh, we can also look at the state of Washington next. This average is at, at about 11 points for Kamala Harris between our two models. Uh, this state is very college educated. It's very white. You know, I think it's going to continue its leftward trend. Uh, however, something interesting to note for Washington, it is actually a top three to four nation, uh, sorry, it, it is a top three to four state in the country in terms of its union electorate. So if you look at union, um, you know, by percentage in terms of the share of workers by state, Washington is top three or four and Trump is actually making up a lot of ground uh, you know, against Harris, not not so much against Biden, but now that Harris is in the race, you know, Trump is making a lot of ground with union voters. If you look at surveys, you saw the Teamsters union survey where, you know, they're backing Trump by like two to one. And so despite the fact that the state is really uh, college educated, we could definitely see uh, Trump make up some ground there. And uh, Oregon is uh, the same margin as well, plus 11 for Kamala Harris. You know, a pretty similar story with that state. It's pretty white and college educated. It does have a decent union electorate. I still think it'll trend left. Uh, Colorado, we're looking at a nine point win for Kamala Harris in terms of the averages between our two models. Uh, this state, it is a historically leftward trending state. It's very white and college educated. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, California Democrats who have moved into the state as well. Uh, they've been pushing the state to the right or sorry, to the left. Um, Illinois, we're looking at a 10 point win for Kamala Harris. That's the average in that state. You know, this state, I think the trend will be kind of neutral. Uh, there are kind of, you know, different factors that could push it left or push it right in terms of the trend. But I definitely think that, you know, there is a decent um, chance that the state could vote um, to the right of Colorado. Uh, that hasn't happened since 1988. In terms of our uh, models, that is uh, not going to happen, but it very well could. Uh, New York, let's go to that state next. That average is about at about nine points for Kamala Harris. Um, and then you can also fill in New Jersey as well. I'll lump those two states together. That's also a nine point victory uh, for Kamala Harris as the average between our two models. I definitely see both of these two states trending uh, to the right because Trump, uh, he's, he's making uh, a lot of improvements with voters of color. And he's also making a lot of improvements with union uh, voters as well. And those two states, New Jersey and New York, are both very union heavy states. New York is like number two in the country in terms of union workers, and New Jersey is like number four in the country. And so the fact that those states also are less white than the national average, they have a decent amount of Hispanics and African Americans. I do see Trump, uh, tr you know, seeing these two states trend to the right because of uh, things like that. Uh, and we can also fill in the congressional districts as well. Uh, for Maine's second congressional district, we're looking at a 17 and a half point victory for Donald Trump. It's in the safe Republican column as the average between our two models. Uh, I definitely think that this district will probably trend to the right uh, just because the state at large could also trend to the right as well. You know, the independents are very swingy, but especially uh, considering the more rural white voters in the state of Maine, I think that they will definitely trend to the right. And then Nebraska second, uh, we have an average of about one and a half points for Donald Trump this election cycle. It will flip into his column uh, from 2020. You know, this district, it was redistricted to become more Republican uh, since 2020. And so I definitely think that, you know, that plus a favorable national environment for Trump, it could it, we could see a very uh, favorable you know, kind of a chance for him to flip that. And, and we have um, him flipping that in terms of the average between our two models. So uh, that's the states that I will fit, fill out on point. I'll kick it back to you. All right. So for Iowa, Ohio, and Texas, all of those margins in our averages basically rounded out to roughly safe margins. As we can see over here, looking at Texas, about a 15.2 percentage point win Iowa at about 16.3 percentage point win, and Ohio roughly about a 16.3 percentage point victory. All these states will be in the safe Republican column. Gains with white working class and Hispanic voters are definitely going to push that state to the right 100%. And so that's where you're going to see those gains and a couple of those states come from as of right now. Florida is about a 13 point victory when we average it out in our final model. I have about a plus 11 and a half point win for Trump in the state of Florida. Gold crown, I believe he has about a 14 ish point win in the state of 14.6 percentage point victory. So when you round it out, it basically comes out 
to about a 13 point victory in the state of Florida in this video. Looking at the Sun Belt, where Donald Trump has gained quite recently in the past couple of months, essentially, I mean, this is going to be absolutely insane. I mean, North Carolina, he is winning that very, very easily. If we go to the state of North Carolina, he's actually winning it by about 8.1% in our average, which would essentially carry Mark Robinson over in the governorship race, and he'd be outperforming the last result by roughly about seven and a half points ish, possibly exactly a seven point improvement, which is similar to the shift in the popular vote that we've been looking at. And it makes sense because the state, believe it or not, actually kind of moves with the nation shift for the past couple of cycles. The state's actually been a pretty stagnant state in terms of its trend. And it tends to move with how much the nation tends to move. And so that would be a pretty big deal if it did actually move with the nation at large. It would be kind of interesting to see that take place once again in the state of North Carolina, as it has done for the last two cycles. Georgia, in our forecast average, basically has a 6.6 .6 percentage point win for Donald Trump. He would be winning the state fairly easily. When you reweigh all the polling data, looking at the demographics, Donald Trump has improved with African Americans and Hispanics and non-college educated voters by too much for Kamala Harris to really even have a path in the state of Georgia. And that also goes for Arizona and Nevada as well. She also has kind of been barred out of pass from these states because Donald Trump has improved with Hispanic voters to the point where she's basically in an unrecoverable spot with them right now with only about 40 something days left to go out. I believe it's almost a little bit under 40 days left till the election. But essentially, Donald Trump is running it up in the Sun Belt by a pretty big amount. And with these final Rust Belt states, guys, look at this with Nebraska second and the Sun Belt states, he's already tied in the Electoral College, meaning he essentially would have to lose in the House of Representatives to not be elected the President of the United States. Now, Looking at the final Rust Belt state averages, we do have state of Wisconsin at about a 6.4 percentage point margin for Donald Trump, as well as in Pennsylvania, a 6.3 percentage point win. So they're voting pretty close with each other as they usually end up doing. I think Wisconsin's going to vote to the right of Pennsylvania. Gold has Pennsylvania voting to the right of Wisconsin very narrowly. So when we average it out, they basically almost all vote together. The polling errors here have been pretty abysmal, and we expect them to be a lot worse in Pennsylvania because they're weighing for an electorate that is too Democrat, especially with all of the new registration gains that Scott Presler has made in the state of Pennsylvania. And I will be doing a space on X probably as of right now while you're watching this, basically with a lot of people from the Pennsylvania campaign team for Trump, and we're going to be fundraising for SoCal Strategies, but looking at Wisconsin... Looking at that margin as well, I mean, the polling data has Harris ahead by about, you know, tied or one point ish, two points. And when you apply the previous polling errors in the state, you actually do get a margin that's fairly similar to what we have right now. And the final state is going to be the state of Michigan, where our averages currently have it as a 4.4 percentage point victory in the Electoral College. And so at, at this point, guys, in our final map, Donald Trump is getting 313 Electoral College votes to Kamala Harris's 225 Electoral College votes. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to go ahead and hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And Gold Crown, any closing comments? Well, this is a very interesting forecast. Our, our, both of our election models are pointing to very similar margins. It was fun doing this video on point. Thanks for having me on and thanks for watching this video, guys.